Let's see, he has given sine 21 degrees as x by y. He's asking us to find out secant 21 minus sine 69 is equal to what? See, let secant 21 remain as it is, secant 21 itself. Let's not change. But sine 21 can be taken as cos 21. Yes or no? So sine 69 can be taken as cos 21 because sine 69 is sine of 90 minus 21. Sine of 90 minus 21 is cos 21. And the point is, sine theta is given to you, x by y. He's asking us to find out secant theta minus cos theta. Remember that right angled uh, triangle concept. Let's say 21 degrees. This angle is 21 degrees. What will be sine theta opposite by hypotenuse or perpendicular by hypotenuse? So this is x and this is y. Now, again, by applying Pythagoras theorem, you can find out the missing side. Once you find out the missing side, you know all the three sides there. Then find out what is secant 21, cos 21. See, the only difference is instead of giving sine theta, he has given some angle there, number there, 21 degrees. So don't get confused. It remains the same. Instead of theta, 21 is given. So sine theta is x by y. He's asking us to find out secant theta minus cos theta. So from the right angle triangle, find out the missing side first of all. See, this will be what? Root over y square minus x square, if you apply Pythagoras theorem. Then secant, secant theta is what? Hypotenuse by adjacent. So y by y square minus x square. y by root over y square minus x square. And cos 21 is adjacent by hypotenuse. So root over y square minus x square by y. Do the simplification and you get the required answer. All right. If secant alpha plus tan alpha equals to 2, then the value of sine alpha is. And he says alpha lies between 0 and 90. Now, I am like uh, fed up of substituting values in place of alpha, theta, a, x, and all that. So this time, we'll solve it using the actual concept and, and not very difficult if you see he says secant alpha plus tan alpha equals to 2. Now the moment you see secant alpha plus tan alpha something should strike to you. You know that secant square uh, theta minus tan square theta equals to 1. This is one of the most important identities that we have right. In fact the three basic identities are what secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1 cos secant square theta minus cot square theta equals to 1 and sin square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1. These are very very useful. You must uh, you must understand the application of these uh, three identities, right? These are the three basic identities. So because secant theta plus tan alpha is given as 2, what we can do here is uh, use try to use this identity, secant square theta minus tan square theta equals to 1, and solve for secant alpha and tan alpha. How do we do that? See, he by himself has given secant alpha plus tan alpha equals to 2. We can say secant square alpha minus tan square alpha equals to 1. Yes or no? Whatever be theta, I mean, it can be theta or alpha. Secant square alpha minus tan square alpha equals to 1, which implies secant alpha plus tan alpha into secant alpha minus tan alpha equals to 1. Yes or no? This is like a square minus b square. a square minus b square can be taken as a plus b into a minus b. Now, we already know that secant alpha plus tan alpha equals to 2. Substitute it here. 2 into secant alpha minus tan alpha equals to 1 which implies, see, because I'm writing all the steps, it is like appearing so big. Otherwise, you would know, actually, secant alpha plus tan alpha and secant alpha minus tan alpha are reciprocals of each other. So if this is 2, this will be 1 by 2. You're getting it. I mean, after solving a few examples, you'll understand this. Just remember, secant alpha plus tan alpha is given as 2, right? So secant alpha minus tan alpha will be 1 by 2. It will be reciprocal of that. Because always you'll follow the same expansion. This is like 1. Whatever is given value here, that comes in the denominator. So 1 by, if this is x, secant alpha plus tan alpha equals to x, then remember secant alpha minus tan alpha will be 1 by x. So you need not write all these steps in the exam. Actually, you can cut it out. You can simply say secant alpha minus tan alpha equals to 1 by 2. You're getting it? I mean, this is like a trick. You can apply this uh, in, in your, uh, you know, in the question that you solve in future, right? If secant alpha plus tan alpha is x, secant alpha minus tan alpha will be 1 by x, right? Reciprocals. And this is the concept behind this, right? The steps that I've shown you. Now, what is he asking us to find out the value of sine alpha? So it is like this, no two equations, equation number one, equation number two. Can you solve these two equations? Yes. Solve these two equations, find out what is secant alpha. Once you know what is secant alpha, you can find out tan alpha from that. And once you know secant alpha and tan alpha, you can find out sine alpha because sine alpha can be taken as tan alpha, tan alpha into or tan alpha by secant alpha. So it's all about using those various trigonometric ratios and functions and identities that we need. Let, let me complete it quickly, right? I need some space, so let me clear this out. Right. So what do we do? Solve these two equations. See, you know that when you add equation 1 and equation 2, here when you add equation 1 and equation 2, plus tan alpha minus tan alpha gets cancelled. Right. So what do we get? 2 secant alpha equals to 2 plus 1 by 2. Are you able to follow? I'm adding equation 1 and equation 2. 1 plus 2. So secant alpha plus secant alpha, 2 secant alpha. Tan alpha minus tan alpha gets cancelled. 2 plus 1 by 2, 3 by 2. 
So we can say, uh, you know, two plus one by two is how much? Five by two secant alpha equals two. Uh, this is how much? Five by two, or we can say secant alpha equals to five by four. Now you can either substitute secant alpha as five by four, find out the value of tan alpha, and then calculate sine alpha. See, sine alpha can be taken as tan alpha uh, by secant alpha. You can actually take uh, this, right? So all the secant alpha has been calculated. Find out tan alpha by equation one or two, and then sine uh, calculate sine alpha. Or go by the right angle triangle concept again. Secant alpha. What is secant alpha? Adjacent by hypotenuse. So adjacent, sorry, hypotenuse by adjacent. So hypotenuse by adjacent is given as five by four. So this is five and this is four. Then obviously this will be three. That's a very common, or I would say the most popular uh, triplet, right, for Pythagoras theorem. What do we need? Sine alpha. So from this, what can be sine alpha? Sine alpha is opposite by hypotenuse, perpendicular by hypotenuse. Three by five. Three by five is equal to 0.6. So 0.6 option three would be the answer for this question.